Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. So um, I've been asked to talk about taxation and warning level uh, labels as part of our options for local government and local communities. Uh, what did I just do? There you go. There you go. Um, so first, I just want to say that these two measures fit in the context of a broader range of options for a local community. So we have fiscal measures like taxation that I'll discuss and the SNAP proposals that were raised earlier. Labeling and warning labels are options at the local level. There are the many place-based approaches that have been discussed today. Um, there are modifications of the products themselves, like the New York City portion cap or the kids' meals items that Margot was just talking about. I personally, for example, am a believer that regulating the size of soda would be a huge impact on consumption, but we haven't had the opportunity to test that, um, although Claire has tried to. Um, changing the retail environment is another set of strategies, restrictions of marketing to children, and then I think lastly, the growing movement to try to move families away from, fake is a big word in this town right now, right? Move families away from fake food and beverages to real food and beverages, um, with sugar sweetened beverages being in the fake food and beverage category. Um, so let's talk about taxation. And I, I, I'm not gonna go into this slide in detail, but I want you to look at the colors. So red is measures that failed, and green is measures that passed over the preceding decade. And what we've really seen, there were about 60 measures in the United States that failed over the preceding decade. But after Mexico passed its uh, groundbreaking tax in 2013, um, we began to see a real shift in the, in the waters. Um, in 2014, the Healthy DNA Nation Act, um, Act, which Henrietta was just talking about, and Berkeley, California broke the ice in the United States and passed the first successful taxes, um, which Margot and CSPI and uh, Kelly Brownell and others had been working on for years. Um, and we had gotten killed on in New York twice when I tried it. Um, <laughs> but I moved to Berkeley. And I'll talk about that. And then we began to have continuing successes um, in this coming years, um, not so much in 2015, but in 2016, the UK passed it, and six US cities um, successfully passed these measures. In 2017, we added on Seattle, Portland's um, looking at it now, India and South Africa are finalizing um, their efforts. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about evaluation in a minute, but I just wanted to talk about how do we think about evaluating what happened with these taxes that were um, implemented, and I basically stole most of this from Steve Gortmaker, who's here, thank you, Steve. Um, so the top line is the traditional framing of how we look at a soda tax impact. You pass a tax, it lowers the price, that decreases consumption, decreases obesity, improves health. But then we also need to remember that there's a second avenue for impact on health and communities, which is that it is a tax and it does raise money, and the uses of that money can also impact health and community well-being. Um, so these are the taxes that were improved in the United States between 2014 and 2017. There are nine of them. They vary in amount from one to two cents per ounce. They vary in the types of products that were covered, whether just SSBs or also diet products, and in the case of the Navajo Nation, also junk foods. Um, and they vary in how the monies were used, um, with in most cases a focus on health um, applications and or education and pre-K, um, except for Cook County, which was more of a general revenue approach. Um, this is the Berkeley Soda Tax Campaign, and where it, it really broke the ground, I think, was that it was an extremely effective grassroots campaign with strong community coalition um, that was able to overcome the strength of the beverage industry for the first time. The left side is the campaign, the right side is the beverage industry campaign against it. Um, this is Reverend Peoples, who was a local pastor whose son had died at age 29 from diabetes and was really the most effective spokesperson um, for implementing the tax in the community. Um, I'm just gonna speak very briefly about what the research on evaluation has shown so far, because this is the first site in the United States where we've been able to evaluate, uh, to build on all the modeling work that was done previously, but look at real world uh, experience. 
Uh, the first paper to come out um, was Jen Falby from UC Berkeley, who found a 21% decrease in consumption of SSBs using street intercept uh, research conducted in low-income neighborhoods before the tax at four months after and in comparison communities. She also found a 63% increase in water, which was quite striking. Um, we did a larger study uh, covering the entire first year of the tax uh, that was a collaboration between PHI and University of North Carolina. We saw a 9.6% decline in SSB sales in the full first year analysis of 15.5 million visits to grocery stores from two chains in Berkeley and in comparison communities. Uh, compared to the predicted, so that was very striking, and we didn't know that that would happen. We also saw an increase, very small, in overall beverage sales, a 3.5% increase in untaxed beverage sales, um, possibly some leakage. It's a very small town, and some people did go next door to, to buy it, but now next door is covered by soda taxes. Um, <clears throat> We did not see an increase in the average grocery bill in these communities. That's been a big campaign message of the industry that this would raise your grocery bills, and we did not see that. Um, we uh, saw a compatible but not statistically significant uh, decline in calories from SSBs in a smaller uh, representative telephone survey that we did. Um, so it went down 19.8%, but that was not significant. And we did see some caloric increase with untaxed beverages. Um, the tax was mostly, but not entirely, passed through to the taxed beverages. Uh, it was not really added to the diet beverages. And it's fairly consistent with the findings from Mexico, which showed a 6% decrease in the first year and a higher decrease in the second year. And basically, our price elasticity, the extent to which sales declined in relation to changing price, um, was very consistent with the previous estimates. Um, so what did people buy instead in the 15 and a half million uh, checkouts we examined? Water went up 16%, milk went up by 1%, and interestingly, diet sodas, which were not taxed and which did not receive uh, pass-through of the tax, uh, went down almost as much as the tax beverages. <clears throat> Other key findings were that the tax raised $13 per capita per year in Berkeley, which, whose consumption at baseline was only about a third of the national average. Um, so it would raise considerably more than that uh, in normal communities. Uh, and these funds are being used entirely for health promotion. So it's successfully raising money for health. And in summary on this part, why limited by observational design, it really suggests that these taxes may be effective in shifting consumers to healthier beverages without undue economic hardship and why raising revenue. Um, there is no data on children yet. Um, there is no data on the impact of revenue use yet. Um, we have some qualitative research that we've been doing together with UC Berkeley that did not find major barriers to implementation, but did identify some areas for improvement. And these new taxes that are coming in, um, there's a whole new set of evaluations that are underway. One question is, did this hurt business? Uh, we saw an increase of 7.2% in food sector jobs, 469 new jobs added. And food sector sales tax revenue, which is not accounted for by the soda tax, went up 15%, which is more than uh, any other sector of the economy. Um, this is just a quick story. Uh, this is a woman I met by chance who is an African American in her 60s who had lived in Berkeley for 40 years. She voted for the tax with some uncertainty. She went to her doctor a few months later and was told she had prediabetes and got referred to the diabetes prevention program at the Y. She went and learned how to eat differently, and when she asked, how much does it cost, the Y said nothing, and she said, why? And they said, because the city is paying with the soda tax money. And a couple of months later, she went back to her doctor, and her blood sugar had gone down and was still down when I met her. Um, OK, I'm going to move on to warning labels quickly, but I like that story, too. Um, there are two models of local laws being proposed in the US. Um, one is on products. It's a much stronger model. It has not yet been passed anywhere. It was defeated in California and New York State. The second model is limited to SSB print advertising. It was passed in San Francisco in 2015 and is still held up in court. And its most likely effect will be to reduce point of sale SSB ads. And then there are two models in global use that I'm going to cheat and describe very briefly because I think they're so great. 
Um, Chile is using a black octagon, um, high sugar front of pack warning on all foods with sugar over a certain level. And Ecuador is using a traffic light for high sugar. <clears throat> And these also look at other um, undesirable nutrients. And these models are spreading quickly in Latin America. So this was the proposed California warning label on products that was not passed yet. This is the model that is legislated in San Francisco but has not uh, been implemented because it's still in the courts. And when we went into the field to look at where these ads are, thank you, Healthy Eating Research, um, we found that it's mostly these point of sale type ads on coolers and in the stores that will be affected. Um, there is no um, real evaluation yet. We did the baseline data, but we're waiting for it to be implemented to be able to collect the post data. And there are two experimental studies that I won't get into uh, that Christina Roberto did, but both with adolescents and with parents suggested that warning labels would be effective. Um, this is the example from Chile that I was talking about. So all sugar-sweetened beverages now in Chile um, that over a certain amount of sugar have to carry this black octagon warning label. It's part of a broader um, program of negative warning labels on unhealthy foods in Chile. And when this was tested with children in an experimental setting, it was found that it did discourage their choosing these products. And this is the Ecuadorian model. Um, this is the labeling on a Coke bottle, for example, that says high in sugar. And interestingly, this has led to massive reformulation of sugar-sweetened beverages in Ecuador. Not always wonderfully, because it's mostly they've become diet, even though they still look like the old ones. So this is Sprite, which looks like regular Sprite, but it's actually Diet Sprite. And on the left is Coke, which is actually Diet Coke. <clears throat> so in summary, many local measures are legally and technically feasible. Um, building understanding, community support, and political feasibility is the greatest obstacle. The preliminary, these early evaluations of taxation in Mexico and Berkeley are suggesting effectiveness, but we need studies of these new sites and new models that are emerging and longer term health impact, um, particularly on caloric impact. Negative warning labels, particularly on products, are a promising strategy. We have no real life data on children for taxation or warning labels yet. And I believe that these local strategies are likely to act synergistically. So it's not do we do warning labels or do we do this? It's really looking at how we pull different measures together. And I'll end with this quote from Tarja Halonen, who was the former president of Finland. And uh, she was talking about smoke for a year. But she said, new ideas go from being ridiculous to being possible to being normal. And I think that's what we're seeing with sugar-sweetened beverage uh, measures. Thank you. <laughs>